Hi there. So it's time for chapter 11. Um, and chapter 11 is called The Miracle. So before I start reading this chapter, I just want to put things in. Sorry, I've got a bit of a twinge in my neck. I just want to put things in context a little bit for you. Um, we found out last chapter that Charlie found 50 pence and he was really excited. Oh my gosh, 50 pence. I found 50 pence and you know, I can feed my family and, and all this. You're probably thinking, well, 50 pence isn't actually that much really, is it? I mean, I can't buy much for 50 pence. But I think that this sort of story was probably set around the Victorian times. And if you think that Charlie's dad was shoveling snow and getting only a few pence for that, and um, when Grandpa Joe got his uh, silver sixpence out of his purse to give to Charlie to get his second chocolate bar, um, that was only six pence, six p. Charlie's just found 50p, so he must feel like he's found about a million pounds or something. Anyway, here we go. Charlie entered the shop and laid the damp 50 pence on the counter. One wonkers, whiffle scrumptious, fudge mallow delight, he said, remembering how much he'd loved the one he had on his birthday. The man behind the counter looked fat and well fed. He had big lips and fat cheeks and a very fat neck. The fat around his collar, excuse me, the fat around his neck bulged out all around the top of his collar like a rubber ring. He turned and reached behind him for the chocolate bar. Then he turned back again and handed it quickly to Charlie. Charlie grabbed it and quickly tore off the wrapper and took an enormous bite. Then he took another and another. And oh, the joy of being able to cram large pieces of something sweet and solid into one's mouth. The sheer blissful joy of being able to fill one's mouth with rich, solid food. You look like you wanted that one, Sonny, the shopkeeper said pleasantly. Charlie nodded, his mouth bulging with chocolate. Mmm. The shopkeeper put Charlie's change on the counter. Take it easy, he said. It'll give you a tummy ache if you swallow it like that without chewing. Charlie went on wolfing the chocolate. He couldn't stop. And in less than half a minute, the whole thing had disappeared down his throat. He was quite out of breath, but he felt marvellously, extraordinarily happy. He reached out a hand to take the change. Then he paused. His eyes were just above the level of the counter. They were staring at the silver coins lying there. The coins were all five penny pieces. There were nine of them altogether. Surely it wouldn't matter if he spent just one more. I think he said quietly. I think I'll have just one more of those chocolate bars. The same kind as before, please. Why not? The fat shopkeeper said, reaching behind him again and taking another whipple scrumptious fudge mallow delight from the shelf. He laid it on the counter. Here's a picture of Charlie talking to the fat shopkeeper. There he is. Charlie picked it up and tore off the wrapper. And suddenly, from underneath the wrapper, there came a brilliant flash of gold. Charlie's heart stood still. It's a golden ticket, screamed the shopkeeper, leaping about a foot into the air. You've got a golden ticket. You found the last golden ticket. Hey, would you believe it? Come and look at this, everybody. The kids found Wonka's last golden ticket. There it is, right there in his hands. It seemed as though the shopkeeper might be going to have a fit. In my shop too, he yelled. He found it right here in my own little shop. Somebody call the newspapers quick and let them know. Watch out now, Sonny. Don't tear it as you unwrap it. That thing's precious. In a few seconds, there was a crowd of about 20 people clustering around Charlie and many more were pushing their way in from the street. Everybody wanted to get a look at the golden ticket and the lucky finder. Where is it? Somebody shouted. Hold it up so we can all see. There it is. There, someone else shouted. He's holding it in his hands. I can see the gold shining. How did he manage to find it? I'd like to know. A large boy shouted angrily. 20 bars a day I've been buying for weeks and weeks. Think of all the free stuff he'll be getting too, another boy said enviously. A lifetime supp supply. He'll need it, the skinny little shrimp, a girl said laughing. Charlie hadn't moved. 
He hadn't even unwrapped the golden ticket from around the chocolate. He was standing very still, holding it tightly with both hands while the crowd pushed and shouted all around him. He felt quite dizzy. There was a peculiar floating sensation coming over him, as though he were floating up in the air like a balloon. His feet didn't seem to be touching the ground at all. He could hear his heart thumping away loudly somewhere in his throat. At that point, he became aware of a hand resting lightly on his shoulder. When he looked up, he saw a tall man standing over him. Listen, the man whispered, I'll buy it from you. I'll give you 50 pounds. How about it, eh? And I'll give you a new bicycle as well, okay? Are you crazy? shouted a woman who was standing equally close. Why, I'd give him 200 pounds for that ticket. You want to sell that ticket for £200, young man? That's quite enough of that, the fat shopkeeper shouted, pushing his way through the crowd and taking Charlie firmly by the arm. Leave the kid alone, will you? Make way there. Let him out. And to Charlie, as he led him to the door, he whispered, Don't you let anybody have it. Take it straight home quickly before you lose it. Run all the way and don't stop until you get there. Understand? Charlie nodded. You know something? The fat shopkeeper said, pausing a moment and smiling at Charlie. I have a feeling you needed a break like this. I'm awfully glad you got it. Good luck to you, Sonny. Thank you, Charlie said. And off he went, running through the snow as fast as his legs would go. And as he flew past Mr Willy Wonka's factory, he turned and waved and sang out, I'll be seeing you! I'll be seeing you soon! And five minutes later, he arrived back at his own home. And that's the end of chapter 11.